Hey everyone, so recently I've had the urge to replay Sekiro for about the fourth or fifth time and I gotta tell you, the more I play this game, the more I'm seeing it in higher and higher regard with its standing within the wider Souls series. Sekiro is truly a top tier From game and I actually feel that this game is still highly underrated by the Souls community. There are several criticisms that this game always receives the chief one among them being that this game's gameplay does not have variety. There is only one weapon and only one main way to play and thus the combat system is boring. I want to shatter this misconception today. I actually think that Sekiro is the only From game since Demon's Souls which has brought significant advancements to the core of the Souls combat system. And while it is true that the game is laser focused on one way of playing, there are techniques and weapon variety offered to the player, which do make the experience fresh every single time. The other thing is, I truly do believe there are some great improvements that could be taken from Sekiro's combat system that could be integrated into newer Souls games to keep the experience varied and also fresh. So, Let's dive in and discuss why I think Sekiro has one of the best combat systems in the series. Let's go back and talk about the statement I made earlier, that this game brought meaningful advancements to the core of Souls Combat. I would like to think that Sekiro is in some ways Souls Combat 2.0. The main mechanic that drives this improvement is the deflection system, which naturally takes precedence over dodging in this game. Dodging of course is the way to avoid damage in the other games, but the thing is, Souls games have been dodge focused ever since Demon Souls. Sure, shields exist and blocking is supposed to be the alternative to dodging, however there is no game in the series where shields ever come close to challenging the dodge meta. Usually, if you seriously want to have a run where your main focus is to block attacks instead of dodge, you have to focus your build and tailor your stats around a shield, usually one of the heavier great shields which actually has the stats and the stability to withstand some of the latter bosses. This stands in contrast to the dodge which is available to everyone from the start without requiring any stat investment unless you want to have a flip and you need to put points into your endurance. Sekiro's deflection manages to introduce a mechanic that feels equal in usefulness to dodging, is skill based just like dodging and is integrated into the character's core toolkit instead of it being an item or something that is stat dependent. No mechanic since Bloodborne's rally transformed the feel of a Souls game as much. I truly believe that this mechanic is simply too good to be just a one and done Sekiro thing. This is something that needs to be integrated in some way to the gameplay of the series, which I think is achievable with some tweaks. Let's just let our minds wander a bit and imagine a mechanic in the newer Souls games. Let's call it Shield Deflect. Let's say this is created and integrated into subsequent games, where by timing your L1 shield raises, you could deflect attacks similarly to how you do it in Sekiro. Now of course, Sekiro does not have a stamina gauge or stamina stats, so this mechanic would have to have a stamina penalty akin to dodging, so you couldn't just spam it forever. Also, naturally this mechanic would be scaled, so deflecting a huge hammer swing from, I don't know, like a small sized enemy would naturally take more stamina than blocking a shield. Same way, blocking something that is magical or fire or lightning related would still deal chip damage. Or you could also introduce a shield size slash attack size tier system where, for example, a small little buckler couldn't deflect attacks of a certain size. Now you have a mechanic that meaningfully expands the Souls combat system and finally offers an alternative to dodging, dodging and dodging, which has become really the only high level way to play. Listen, I'm not saying shields are not useful, but having something like this mechanic would alleviate the two main complaints that shields always get, which is number one, that they are less skill based and number two, that gameplay with them is quite boring. 
I happen to agree with both of these sentiments. Even if you have a viable shield build, like for example, you're using the fingerprint great shield in Elden Ring, it is honestly never as satisfying to sit behind that thing and tank attacks than it is to dodge stuff. It seems like the games themselves, by their nature, always seem to push you to eventually reduce your shield dependence and move to a dodge-focused playstyle. Shields always get used by newer players and they do offer a lot of help when you start out. And I'm not saying I never use shields, I do find them quite useful in builds as well, but you can't deny that the games in the series do not encourage you to eventually stop relying on your shield. An alternative mechanic to this, with the aforementioned features, I think could be really helpful in offering an alternative and also keep things way fresher. Aside from the deflection, the other genius gameplay feature of Sekiro that I would like to highlight is the perilous attack system. For anyone who doesn't know, these are specific, normally very difficult slash almost impossible to dodge attacks that can be dealt with using a specific tool in your main arsenal. Sekiro has three of these, well technically four if you count the lightning counter, and these are thrusts, sweeps and grabs. The equation is simple, jumps counter sweeps, Mikiri counters thrust attacks and dodging counters grabs. This is actually very similar to the strike throw gameplay which is the core of many fighting games. These specific attacks are something I would love to see integrated into other Souls entries. We already saw that some of the things they introduced in Sekiro are making their way over into the series. Elden Ring specifically, of course, introduced the jump button. So I think it feels natural to bring perilous attacks over, as well as some of the more interesting movement systems and mechanics from Sekiro as well. Plus, if you think about it, the mechanic already exists in other entries in the series in some very limited capacity. I'm talking about how you can counter Manus' and Malekith's attacks, which are incredibly difficult to dodge normally with specific items. But an expanded version of the perilous attack system would go a long way in keeping the combat not only interesting, but also introduce an alternative way for From to ramp up the difficulty. With Elden Ring, it has become really obvious that the main method From uses to keep the difficulty high nowadays is to introduce, well frankly ridiculous, attack delays, tracking and overly long combos to many of the enemies. This is something many people, including me, have criticized the game for. From had to do this because at this point the skill ceiling of the community is so high and everybody is so adept at dodging that it is actually difficult now for them to keep the enemies and the bosses challenging without resorting to some of these aforementioned methods. Taking inspiration instead from perilous attacks would allow for a different way of ramping up boss challenge and enemy challenge, something which I think the series desperately needs. Listen, I've talked about this before, but I still truly believe that if From continues down this path, they will eventually get to a point where it will be impossible to push the boss difficulty any further. You can already see them pushing the limit, I think, with some of the Elden Ring super bosses, specifically Melania. I mean, there is no person in the world who hasn't complained about Melania's waterfall dance, because that's an attack that almost feels too ridiculous with FromSoft expecting you to avoid it. By instead moving to new mechanics, an alternative could be offered to keep combat challenging, but also fair. Now, of course, going back to Sekiro, I do agree with the sentiment that the game is a bit too focused on one style of play. And if you don't enjoy deflecting or have a hard time with it, you will struggle with the game. That's why my main idea and main thesis for this video should be that instead, they should be offering the Sekiro mechanics as an alternative way to play. That way, if you want to flip around and dodge, go ahead and do that. That way, if you want to deflect more, do that. That way, if you want to combine both, yeah, fine, go ahead. But Sekiro itself does fall into the same trap as some of the other games in the series which have very laser-focused mechanics. Bloodborne, of course, focused almost exclusively on dodging 
And I think a lot of people did criticize the game for essentially removing shields. That's why my view should always be to have more mechanics and more ways to play, rather than take things away and make stuff unviable. However, I do strongly disagree with the notion that just because of this focus, Sekiro's combat is boring. In fact, I think this idea has emerged because it actually takes quite a long time to get good at Sekiro's combat system. In a sense, it is very similar to the previously briefly mentioned fighting game comparison. On your first Sekiro playthrough, you will be adjusting to the combat system, either because you are new at Souls games or because you come from some of the other games and you essentially have to relearn everything for Sekiro. Just a side note here, added to that, I think Sekiro is definitely not the best game to get into the series. Therefore, you will be relying a lot on just deflecting and using your standard R1 attacks. By the end of your run, you will most likely master countering and perilous attacks, but that will be that. For prosthetics, you will most likely use the most convenient ones. The shurikens are always useful, and maybe you'll branch out and try a couple of the other ones that the game really throws into your path. I'm saying this because this is exactly how I played Sekiro on my first run. And back then, I did fully agree with the sentiment that combat is one note. In terms of the fighting game comparison, I feel like this is really similar when you start learning a new fighting game, whether you're getting into the genre for the first time or you're just transitioning from another game. What you will do is you will find a character that you really like, you will discover the core of their moveset, which you really enjoy using, like for example, the teleport for Scorpion from MK, or like a Hadoken for Ryu or an uppercut. And you expand from there. You eventually learn some of the more basic combos and then you go to town using these mechanics which do work but are a tiny fraction of the overall gameplay features and the character's capabilities. Just like with fighting games, with Sekiro, as you play more and more and you really learn the ins and outs of the mechanics, you start to see how much depth the game actually offers. Sure, there are no weapons to choose from, but there are two other things. One are the prosthetic tools, which essentially act as your hunter tools as well as your secondary weapons. I think with this, to talk about it a bit, From have really learned their lesson from Bloodborne. Prosthetic tools are very similar to the hunter tools. However, the hunter tools in Bloodborne were limited due to requiring way too many bullets per use, where these bullets were much better spent doing other things. In Sekiro, the Spirit Emblem mechanic actually allows you to liberally use your prosthetic tools, and unless you really go ham with them, you are essentially never going to run out of your key resource. But anyways, if you go a bit deeper into the upgrade path of the prosthetic tools, the possibilities really start opening up. You can poison enemies with the Sabi Maru, have an alternative to your parry and your dodge with the Mist Raven, and do some absolutely wild things with the Umbrella. Just to give you an example, you can parry an attack with the Fire Umbrella, counter attack with it, switch to your flame, blast the enemy and at the same time fire buff your weapon and continue on attacking. The interactions between the prosthetic tools and your basic moveset really opens up once you go beyond shuriken, axe and spear. If you want to have a look at it, just look at high-level Sekiro gameplay on YouTube. There are some exceptional players and exceptional montages on all the crazy shit you can do. However, as mentioned before, to be able to use all of these tools to their full potential, you really need to be comfortable with the core combat system, which is why I think it's not possible to accurately gauge what's possible in Sekiro on your first run. You could consider this a failure on the game's part, however, I do not think this was intentional. The simple fact is, you can 100% play through the game with no issues, without ever touching any of the tools. Which does lead to a lot of people sticking to what the game teaches first, which is deflecting and attacking. Again, it really is like fighting games, you go through a character tutorial for a fighting game character, for example in Street Fighter, it teaches you basic combos, and you'll go online with these basic combos because they work, but there's a lot you are leaving out. And I think both Sekiro and fighting games in general 
do sometimes fail in not teaching the player more. The other main mechanic that varies up Sekiro's combat, which I think a lot of people don't utilize to their full potential, is the combat arts. These are essentially the weapon arts you see in other Souls games, however, here they again feel much more integrated into your overall toolkit. One of the reasons for this is that these do not take any resource to use. To make things more balanced, this is countered by the fact that combat arts often do have slower startup and recovery, making them much more risky to use if you mess up. The second key thing is, because Sekiro allows you to pause, you can switch out your skills on the fly instead of being stuck with one skill per weapon. This is one of the tactics I only started using in the most recent playthrough I did, and once I started I couldn't believe how much more tactical flexibility it gave. Because sure, Ichimanji double works well on Owl, but maybe you need the mortal blade for phase 2 because you want to do more damage. Well, why not use both? From has started integrating combat arts and weapon arts more and more into core gameplay, in Elden Ring especially, they feel very useful. But I do think to keep these fresh, it would be really good to have multiple slots on weapons for your weapon arts and you'll be able to switch them on the fly like spells, I think it would really help with expanding the combat system even more. Because to switch weapon arts now in, for example, Elden Ring, you need to go to a bonfire or have a secondary weapon. But what if I want to have two different skills to see how they synergize together? What I'm trying to sum up here is that Sekiro has a learning curve. Once you've played the game enough, you start to see the combat system goes way beyond deflect R1, deflect R1. Again, I can only compare this to a fighting game where you start to see frame data, different moves, your deeper mechanic, character specific stuff after you've played enough. Perhaps there is an issue with Sekiro, the same issue that many other From games have, which is how these mechanics are presented and explained to the player, the tutorial essentially. Maybe more could have been done to explain all of Sekiro's systems and how to mix and match your secondary weapons and skills, especially since this game differs from the other games in the series by so much. The game is good at giving you hints very early on, such as putting shielded enemies after picking up an axe. That is a great natural way of teaching people that you need to use different prosthetic tools for different things but this mechanic is essentially completely abandoned afterwards. Still, I truly believe that there is a lot to learn from Sekiro, and a lot of its gameplay mechanics could be implemented in subsequent Souls games to freshen up the gameplay. Listen, there are now 6 games in the series which essentially have the same dodge-heavy gameplay, and I think a bit of change will be needed soon to keep the series feeling interesting from a combat perspective. This is not to mention the fact that more and more Souls-likes and Souls clones are coming out, which means that at this point, like you're basically dodge rolling in every other game. Drawing from Sekiro would provide more ways for From to keep the gameplay of the series fresh, as well as ramp up the difficulty in a fair way without sliding into bullshit territory, which I think some of the late game and optional bosses in Elden Ring and even going back to Dark Souls 3's DLCs have started to gravitate towards. I know for a fact that Miyazaki has talked about Elden Ring and Sekiro, and the fact that because the games were essentially developed in tandem, they couldn't take all the lessons they learned from Sekiro and implement them fully into Elden Ring. I really, really hope this happens with the next mainline game, and we will have new core gameplay elements and mechanics to look forward to and learn. The deeper we go into the series and the more games are released, the more and more such a thing is needed. As for people who have played Sekiro and didn't enjoy the combat system, I urge you to give this game another try. There is a moment where Sekiro just clicks. Very similarly to how other games in the series click after a while. And once you get there, the enjoyment you will have with this game will skyrocket and you will start to feel like an absolute badass. I think no other game in the series other than Bloodborne makes you feel like such a badass and allow you to dance around your opponents as much as Sekiro does. Once you reach that state, believe me, you will start to see this game in a different light.
So I hope you guys enjoyed this little conversation around Sekiro. This is a game I wanted to talk about for a long time. This video was delayed for several weeks, but I finally managed to get things out now. So if you did enjoy, do make sure to like, comment and subscribe, as well as turn on post notifications. At the end of this video and within the pinned comments, you will see some more videos, more discussion videos on the Soul series as well. And I do stream as well every Tuesday and Saturday, although Christmas is coming up, so my schedule will be a little bit all over the place. But that's besides the point. Thanks again for watching, hope you enjoyed, and I hope to catch you next time on one of my other videos. Peace out everyone, and goodbye.